Big changes are ahead for Bayonetta 3. And we know Platinum Games has a reputation for making uh, a lot of very high-quality games that don't necessarily always sell the greatest. Uh, one such game that I know a lot of people are actually kind of looking forward to is a Nintendo Switch exclusive called Astral Chain that comes out this August. But now we finally have some news on Bayonetta 3, and it's very interesting. Uh, while it doesn't tell us anything, it also tells us a lot at the same time. Just listen, all right? So studio head at Sushi Inaba uh, was, had an interview with Video Game Chronicles, and here's what he said in the interview about uh, Bayonetta 3, and he says, Right now, we're in the middle of designing something that has never been done before. I know a lot of people say that, but the game we're working on truly is unlike anything else. Even for our varied history of veteran game developers, this is something that has never been designed before. So from a game design perspective, we're very excited right now. That is... Wow. <laughs> um, and he's right. A lot of people do say, you know, oh, we're making something that's never been done before, this and that, and then you get the final product, and it ends up being something we've seen in other games. But, I mean, he even recognizes that, look, other people say this all the time, but this is different. Uh, this is Platinum Games. So Platinum Games does a lot of crazy things. They have a lot of crazy different games, a lot of crazy concepts. You know, the Wonderful 101 wasn't really done before the Wonderful 101 existed. Uh, it can be arguable that Bayonetta and the way that Bayonetta does things wasn't done before Bayonetta 1 and 2. Uh, it's arguable that Platinum comes up with a lot of original ideas. Astral Chain looks like it has a lot of originality in it. So Platinum Games is one studio that does like to experiment and does like to really put their best foot forward with whatever concepts they come up with. But what you get out of these quotes from studio head at Sushi Inaba is that Bayonetta 3 is not going to be like Bayonetta 1 and 2. Bayonetta 3 is going to be drastically different in some major ways. I'm sure it'll still be you know, an action game. I doubt it's going to leave the genre it's in. Although, who knows, maybe it'll be action RPG or something. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not exactly sure... Uh, what direction they're going in because we haven't seen it but i'm very interested when someone says look we're doing something different we're doing something that we've never done before um unlike anything else that, that we've ever worked on so that's exciting because it does mean one thing for sure and this can be said beyond a doubt and that is that bayonetta 3 is ambitious i know he doesn't use that word but when you hear things like right now we're in the middle of designing something that has never been done before i know a lot of people say that but the game we're working on is truly unlike anything else that sounds ambitious and that's exactly what you want platinum games to be doing anytime platinum games is making something uh whether it's this whether it's um you know astral chain or the wonderful 101 or heck Scalebound that was canceled uh that used to be microsoft's game i think ambition is when platinum games is at their best uh there are some studios that you could argue that should be a little less ambitious that games might be better if they stuck more to the formula that made the games before it successful but platinum games is one of those studios where that's not really usually the case yeah they could just make more bayonetta right bayonetta 2 was basically more of bayonetta 1 uh, and you can debate back and forth which game is better, but it's kind of like Super Mario Galaxy 1 versus Super Mario Galaxy 2. You can debate which one is better, but Galaxy 2 is really more of the same from Galaxy 1. Uh, I think Galaxy 2 is better, but honestly, it's like splitting hairs because Galaxy 1 obviously introduced all the concepts that are used in Galaxy 2. Uh, and so they easily could have just made Bayonetta 3 more Bayonetta. I think that's what most people expected. It's a series we don't get very often. Uh, right now, it's been like a once-per-generation series, you know, back on the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3, and then on Wii U, uh, now on Switch. And so it, it's been kind of like this once-per-generation series, and I can appreciate it, but honestly, I was just expecting more Bayonetta because that's what we got with Bayonetta 2. But uh, Platinum Games is like, nah, dog, nah, dog. We're getting something unique. And I think that's exciting. And I honestly want to hear from some gamers out there that are hardcore Bayonetta fans. And I mean hardcore Bayonetta fans. I'm not a hardcore Bayonetta fan. I really enjoyed Bayonetta 1 and 2. I enjoyed them a lot. But I'm not much of an action game guy, right? Like, if you slap a Devil May Cry game in front of me, 
I think I'd rather play Twilight Princess or something, right? Like, I'd rather go play an action RPG, an action adventure game, rather than a pure action game. Usually, pure action games don't appeal to me much. Uh, and the, honestly, the only reason I play Bayonetta 1 and 2 is because Bayonetta 2 was exclusive on Wii U at the time and now on Switch. And I went back and played some Bayonetta 1, and they had that Star Fox content added in, which was actually really, really cool. Uh, and led to a lot of people wondering if, <laughs> if they should be making a Star Fox game at Platinum Games. And now people are wondering if Ubisoft should make a Star Fox game after what they did with Star Fox and Starlink. What's been interesting with Star Fox is that now we've had two third-party studios prove that they can almost do Star Fox better than Nintendo can. I think the Star Fox content in Bayonetta was very well received, and obviously the Starlink ones have been very well received. So Ubisoft, Platinum Games, Star Fox Zero wasn't well received, but... That's neither here nor there. Maybe they were so good because those games weren't Star Fox games. What I do, though, is that Bayonetta 3's hype level is got to start to be rising. And the fact that they're even talking about this tells me that I do think... I, I have no evidence for this. But the fact they're even talking about this in an interview tells me that I do think at some point this year we're going to see Bayonetta 3. No, I don't think it's releasing in 2019. I do not think it's a 2019 title. I didn't think it was a 2019 title when they announced it back in 2017 at the Game Awards. Because they only showed a CGI trailer, which usually is an indication that they're kind of just starting development and they're really not that far along. So I don't expect it this year. But can we see it this year? Could it be present at E3? You bet it could be. Uh, is it possible that it's going to be present again, first gameplay reveal, at the Game Awards, where it was initially unveiled? You're damn right it could be. And I know that Nintendo feels that Bayonetta is the kind of franchise that could appeal at the Game Awards, since the Game Awards is attracting a lot of gamers' eyes to it that aren't just Nintendo fans, but might be really into Bayonetta. Uh, so I do think that Nintendo even thinks that possibly that might be even a better venue than E3, where Nintendo is just attracting Nintendo fan eyes generally at E3. But at the Game Awards, you have Microsoft fan eyes, you have Sony's, you know, you have PC. You have a lot of different gamers across a lot of multiple platforms and genres watching. So uh, it'll be interesting to see if we do see Bayonetta 3 this year. Again, I think it's possible at E3 or at the Game Awards. If it's not at E3, then I'm going to be all on the Game Awards train. I thought we were actually going to see it at the Game Awards last year. Uh, that was one of my predictions for the Game Awards 2018, and it didn't come true, which is fine. Uh, obviously the game wasn't as far along in development as I hoped it would be at the time. No, I still didn't think it was coming this year, but I thought, hey, look, they teased it last year. Maybe show a little bit this year. Basically, I thought they'd death stranding it, you know, tease one year, a little bit in the next year, a little bit the next year, then finally bring it out in 2020. I still think it's going to be a 2020 game, uh, and I especially think it's going to be a 2020 game since Metro Prime 4 probably is not going to be a 2020 game. Uh, 2021 at the earliest, I think, since they had a restart development and Retro Studios is busy hiring a whole bunch of people. I guess that's neither here nor there. Um, one thing I'm, I, I do want to say about Bayonetta and why I appreciate the series, uh, well, really two things, to be fair. Uh, the first is the character. I love Bayonetta. Um, she kind of skirts the edge, right? Like, she's, she, she's overly sexualized, of course, but... It's done in a way that seems respectful, right? Like, she is a character who is overly sexualized, but owns her sexuality. She uses her sexuality as part of her personality. Not just as, like, a weapon or anything like that against other characters, but as an actual part of her persona. And I think that that is a perfectly acceptable way to do something like that. Uh, there are people I know in the real world that make me dress a little more scantily clad than I'm comfortable for. But if they're owning their sexuality and that's just part of who they are, who am I to tell them not to do it? And that's kind of the way I feel with Bayonetta. She owns who she is. And that's really cool. Uh, she's a very powerful female character. And I think that's um, appreciated, especially in Nintendo's lineup. Because uh, you, you have Samus, who's a powerful character. And you have Bayonetta. Uh, just keep adding to that roster, I think, is important. Uh, it'd be nice to get Tomb Raider, to be honest. I'd love to see some of the, the newer Tomb Raider games come to Switch eventually, too. So then we have the you know a strong, another strong female character in Laura Croft. And I'm not, I'm not one of those people that think we need a whole bunch of you know female characters and they make games better, per se. But I do think that it's nice to have a, a diverse cast of heroes. Uh, and that's the weird thing about Bayonetta. Is she really a hero? I mean, she's the Umbra Witch. I don't know if that makes her a hero, per se. Um, she kind of, again, skirts the line of being a villain and a hero, too, which is another, like, I just, the Bayonetta character is amazing to me. And then the other thing is obviously the gameplay. The gameplay of Bayonetta's are, uh, the Bayonetta games are fantastic. 
it's quick paced. It's very action oriented. I like some of the the uh, the Umbra abilities and um, <laughs> there's some very uh, bloody and gory um, action sequences that that you could trigger. Uh, and again, it's a game that knows what it is and owns it and didn't seem to censor itself that much when it became Nintendo exclusive, which I like. It means Nintendo's telling Platinum, look, do what you want. It's your game. We literally wanted your game on our platform. So do what you do with it. It adds diversity. It adds a mature title. And I really appreciate that uh, Platinum Games and Nintendo are continuing to work at it. Just like I appreciate they're being ambitious with Bayonetta 3. So you guys let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. Uh, are you excited about this ambition? Are you a bit worried because you wanted it to be more like the other Bayonettas and that this might ruin it? Because sometimes ambition and sometimes trying new things don't always come together as well as we hope. Uh, but you guys let me know what you think. I am Nintendo Rolf from Nintendo Prime. Why don't you drop a like on this video, subscribe for more content, and enter our Nintendo Switch Super Smash Bros. Ultimate giveaway through the Gleam.io link down in the description. Oh, man. It's been a long journey. But uh, Bayonetta 3 is being talked about, and that, to me, is exciting. All right. I'll catch you guys in the next video.